Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. How are you guys doing today? How are you guys doing today? Hey, this is Gregory Wilds coming live to you from Houston, Texas with this inspirational morning walk. For first time listeners, I just get some exercise in the mornings and I share my thoughts with you guys, what I'm inspired to talk about. But um, I was debating whether to go outside or stay in here because the temperature keep dropping. It's probably 40 or dropping down a little bit into the um, late 30s. So it's a little, little kind of chilly out there for my kind of liking. So I'm going to sit in the vehicle here where I can be a little more comfortable and get this word out. But good morning. Good morning. I hope you guys had a great weekend, man. And um, I'm just ready to take on this week. But yeah, if you like what you hear, you could always go on YouTube. Look me up there. Just go on YouTube. Dude. I pay my name Gregory Wiles, that's W Y L E S, and the channel should come up. Just click on the red subscribe button there, and if when it changed color, you know your subscription went through. That would help the channel out. Um, I can get to reach more people. But yes, man, yes, it's a great day here. It's nice and sunny. It's a sunny day, but it's still a little chilly. But um, you know, over the weekend, you know, I like I tell you guys, I just just got to keep listening to inspirational stuff, feeding my spirit with positive stuff because I can't only give out. I got to keep receiving and keep refilling my mind with positive stuff. Good morning, Tessa. Good morning, cuz. So, um, and I was I was doing today we're going to do but faith versus fear. Faith versus fear, and I hear some good little stuff from Tony Evans. He had a, um, a sermon on this as I was doing my research on it, and um, so I can quote a few things from him, you know, um, that he said, and um, to make this add some spice to what I'm going to do here, you know. Um, so that's what I'm going to do here today. But we're going to talk about faith versus fear. We're going to lie them side by side. We talk about fear. We talk about faith. I know you hear a lot of scriptures, but I can put a little bit, a little bit of twist it. You know, I just like to find things that are a little different to make it, you know, come home, make the pint stick some more. So we're going to lie them side by side. Then we can look at the story from the Bible that brings this out, brings this point out, right? So first, let's look at the dictionary definition of fear. We're talking about faith versus fear fear and how similar they are. So the dictionary definition of fear, it's uh, one of the definitions. It's an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief, right? Caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause um, pain or a threat. It's the belief, it's an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous. It's an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief. It's not real. It's, it's a belief, right? And then what the Bible say about fear? Um, it's in 2 Timothy 1, 7. Said, 1, 7 said, God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. So God said, I didn't give you the spirit of fear. So number one, we see fear is a spirit. God said, I didn't give you the spirit of fear. I give you power, love, and of self-control. So you could control that fear, right? So let's see what the Bible and dictionary said about faith. Faith is the complete trust or confidence in someone or something. The complete trust or confidence in someone or something. That's what the dictionary said about faith and what the Bible said about faith. Hebrews 11, 1 said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So if we combine the two, um, we're saying this complete trust or confidence, you got complete trust or confidence in something or someone that someone is going to come true for you, do what they say, or something is going to happen even though it didn't happen yet, right? You got a complete trust and confidence that this either this person can come true for you they're gonna do what they say they're gonna do for you or this thing is gonna happen that even though it didn't even happen yet if you mix the two right you get that's what the bible and the dictionary is saying about faith but um so but, but before we can fully understand the biblical principle of fear versus faith we must first understand that fear and faith are opposing opposites they're opposing opposites Oddly enough, the same principle applies to both fear and faith. It's the same principles apply both to fear and faith. You must believe. You must believe. The difference, however, is what or whom do you believe in? What or whom do you believe in, right? So in a nutshell, when you exercise the fear, you are... Is faith you exercise at the same time, right? 
Okay, so Greg, Greedo, that makes sense to me. I'm talking about fear. How, how fear is exercising faith. You exercising faith in something to go wrong, right? You, Brooks, right now, you need some money. God's saying, you know what? I'm going to take care of you. I feed the birds and the bees. Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things are going to be added on to thee. But you don't have no finance for it. Rather than you hold on to the word that God promised, you got more faith in in the situation that your situation will remain that way. So you're still exercising faith, but in the negative light. In a nutshell, you believe in the devil over God. That's when the nutshell you believe. I can jump the gun and say that straight out. You believe in the devil over God. When you exercise fear, because remember he said, I did not give you the spirit of fear. So if he didn't give it to you, where it come from, right? So you exercise in faith in the same way, but in exercising faith in this stuff not happening to you rather than you believe in the word and it's going to come out the way you want it to come out so you still that's why it says opposing opposites it's the same principle right so let's go into a little story here and it might bring it out a little clearer clearer right because i want to put a different angle to this and make it come on clearer so mark 4 let's look at mark 4 35 through 41 mark 4 35 through 41 when jesus calmed the storm there's a lot of little nuggets in here when jesus calmed the storm right when he was talking to the crows he was preaching to the crows he gave them a lot of um a lot of parables and all that so after he finished with them as evening we can pick it up from 35 mark 4 35 he said as evening came jesus said to his disciples let's cross to the other side of the lake i want you to stick a pin there i want to remember this let's cross let us cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind, although other little small boats was following them, right? But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat and it began to fill with water. So this storm, a big storm come and it filled up the, you know, water started to get into the boat. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. Jesus is asleep and these storms are going on. The disciples woke him up shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? This storm is going on, Jesus, and you're sleeping with your head on a cushion. Storm going on in my life right now. I'm sick, Jesus, and you sleeping on my case. I'm praying I'm, I'm getting anything. I, I, my finances running low, about to, to foreclose on my house, the, my car, my losing business, this whole pandemic, like my business went down, I can't even catch myself. Are you sleeping on my case, Jesus? How much of us feel like that right now? Like he's not hearing us, he is sleeping when our storms are going on. How much of us feeling like that right now? That he is sleeping and he don't care. Teacher. They cry out, don't you care that we're going to drown? Don't you care about me, Jesus? So let's go on in 39. When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said, and said to the wave. This is, is the NLT translation. It says, silence, be still. And the King James and them said, peace, be still, right? Peace, be still. So if he's saying peace, be still, that means peace can move, right? Peace can move. Peace be still. Then suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? He said, why are we afraid, Jesus? You see those storms. See, these men, these guys was fishermen, right? These guys always on the sea, there was fishermen. Most of them disciples were fishermen. Natasha Passat, good morning, good morning. So they know about storms, they know about rough seas. But if they get scared with this storm... Michael Ross, good morning, sir. How are you doing? If they get in, if they get a little fear here, this got to be a storm that really scared them. And they say, Jesus, why were we? Why are we afraid? You see what's going on out there? You see what's going on out there? You asking us why are we afraid? Do we have faith? But you remember, I tell you, remember this thing what God said, what Jesus tell them up here. Let us cross over to the other side. Let us cross over. He didn't say, I going over and leave y'all. He didn't say, well, when we're going over, we can drink. He said, let us cross over. So he wants to see the faith. So when you have all of this good language, the Christian language that we got um, about, you know, all things good and good and God is good and, and, and all the time. And we got all these scriptures we quote in God. said, I want to see the faith behind all those scriptures you quote in there, right? 
So when the storm comes, Jesus said, let us go over to the other side. He said, let us go. That's why you went and sleep. Because we're going to make it over to the other side. But you get in nervous and you don't want to hold on on his word, right? He said he's going to take care of you. He said, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and everything else is going to be added onto thee. Your bank account showing you zero right now. It's in red. You get a foreclosure. But he's saying, in the midst of the storm, I want you to be still. Be calm. Be calm in the midst of the storm and hold on on my word. I said, let us cross over to the other side. And you worried about the storm, right? You see, peace ain't got nothing to do with the external circumstances. That's why he said, peace be still. It don't got nothing to do with the external circumstances. It's all, is the internal, being calm internally, despite of what's going on on the outside. Despite of your storms right now, he's saying, be still, be still. Be still, hold on to my word. Hold on to my word. I said, let us go across to the other side. We're going to make it across. That's why I could be sleeping here. I'm not worried. Why are you worried? My word said, remember we talk about the word and the power in the word. He said, just hold on to my word. Remember I work all things together for good. Remember the story with the guy that was praying about the, um, about a financial increase. He was praying about a financial increase. And then a fire came and burned his house down. He said, God, I asked you for an increase. Are you decreasing me? What's up with that? But when he go to rebuild the house, a lot of treasures was buried under his house. A lot of treasures was buried under his house. So he's saying, peace be still. Yeah, I work everything together for good. Right? That peace that surpasses all understanding. Right? So now let's go on. So the disciples were absolutely terrified. Now they get afraid. Right? Now they get afraid. Here they ask him, who is this man? They ask each other. Even the wind and the wave obey him. And that's when we realize who we're dealing with. We got to really, now they really get afraid. They was afraid of the storm at first, but now they're getting afraid of this man. Who is this man? Who is this man? Now they're afraid now, right? Who is this man? Even the wind and the wave obey him. That's what we're dealing with, guys. That's what we are dealing with this man got the power to make the winds and the waves obey him that's why we shouldn't be afraid he said he's with us he's on the boat with them right that's not what the scripture said do not be afraid for i'm with you he with them right on this boat and they still was afraid he's with them is he the luck bro jesus if you on this boat with me and this wave and this storm going on and you sleeping comfortably and you're not worried, bro, is either you crazy or you're lying to us. You know what? You got to be lying to us. That's what that's what we're saying. Jesus' word is lying to us. When he tell us, seek ye first the kingdom, why we getting nervous? Is he lying to us, right? He's right there with us. And he that wasn't worried, right? So we got to understand the power of this man that we're dealing with. That's what I get scared for now. Who's this man? Now they'll get terrified. Who's this man? Even the wind and the wave obey him, right? And um, Tony Evans has used this example here. He used this example, but this little boy was on this airplane, right? This little boy was on this airplane. The plane go through a lot of turbulence. A lot of turbulence. The plane bouncing all around in the skies. And this woman, an old elderly woman, and she was nervous. She was scared. And this little boy next to her playing with a Rubik's Cube or something. He playing his little game. And he's not worried. He just that calm playing his little game. And she was, she said, what's going on with you? You are not scared? All this stuff was going on. All this plane is going on. You are not scared? The little boy said, no, I'm not scared. She said, why you are not scared? He said, because my daddy's the pilot. My daddy's the pilot, so I'm not scared. I know he's going to get us through this storm. And that's how we got to be. When the storm going, you know who's the pilot. You know Jesus, God driving that. that. You know the pilot, Mortal Holder, good morning. You know who's the pilot, so you shouldn't be scared. Just like the little boy, you shouldn't be scared, right? Faith versus the fear, right? We can exercise faith or fear, right? And you can just read, finish up with this. Faith or fear is not something that just happens to you without your input. It don't just happen without your input. Fear simply fills the space where faith should abide and takes advantage of the fact that you have not made the choice to have faith in God's word. 
So where you are lacking the faith, fear is going to fill the void, right? Fear is going to fill the void. And the words of Zig Ziglar, I like this quote from Zig Ziglar. Zig Ziglar said, fear has two meanings. Fear has two meanings. He said, you can forget everything and run. The F-E-A-R, forget everything and run. Or face everything and rise. You either forget everything and run in your fear or you face everything and rise. The choice is yours, as he's saying. Choose wisely, right, guys? Fear or faith. So if you think Jesus is sleeping when you're going through your storms, it's a test. It's just like in school, right? It's just like in school when you get a test. You got to prepare for the test, right? But the teacher don't bring the test on nothing that he didn't cover with you. Everything and be in that final exam is what you cover throughout the course of the year. All you got to do is study and prepare. So when the exam time comes, you're not afraid. Even though it look like these questions are so hard and everybody around you nervous. No, you, you, you know you prepare, right? So that's why Jesus... He, and, and then... So you got all these words already. You got all the words. You got all these promises. He's saying you need to be afraid of the test. Now I can put you through the test to see if all this stuff for you talking, the right Christian talk and the right Christian way of your dressing, you impressing people. I'm going to put you through the test to see if you really believe what you're telling people. When you quote in these scriptures to people, God is good and good is God all the time and God is good and, and I know weapon formed against me shall prosper and we quote in all these scriptures. I can say I'm going to put you through the test and see if you really mean that so if you think god is sleeping on your case right now he's not it's your test and you need to pass the test exercise faith over fear all right guys i'm gonna leave it there guys but have a great monday and think about this as you go on are you exercising faith over fear or are you letting fear overtake your faith right have a great day have a great great day we'll talk again tori keys good morning we'll talk jillian good morning good morning we'll talk again on wednesday guys goodbye